Thank you for your talk here. I, one thing I didn't see in here, I didn't see the Bible and God. Can you address that uh, in part, as part of your beliefs and your mm, Well, I'll say a little bit about that. I'd say uh, if Moses had come down from the mountain with this story, nobody would have believed him. So um, we've learned a little bit since then. I, I personally look at this and say our job as scientists is to find out what has happened. How does it work? Uh, and I think the explanations of how it all got started, that's way beyond us, and what it means the, for, for the human spirit, even what is the human spirit, that's not something scientists can really tackle. We're just telling you what we found, and I think that's our job, but it's a magnificent story. Yeah, so more questions. As a scientist for NASA, uh, you've made tremendous contributions to the scientific community. What challenges do you face within the NASA community when you're working with engineers who are building the instruments that calibrate the measurements and the theories uh, that, that you have, and the program managers who are trying to keep things within budgets and schedules? How do you and your colleagues kind of put that all together and have as many successful missions as, as you've had? Well, good question. It seems to me that one of the uh, skills that uh, is underappreciated in the world is project management. That uh, the, uh, the idea of, of the scientist that he can write down in a paragraph or a page or a small book, uh, to translate that into the work of 2,000 people for five or 10 years, that's uh, way beyond any scientist's ability to describe. And it's, uh, I think, a tribute to the organizational talent of our modern society and to particular individuals in our system. Um, and uh, to me, the managers that make this happen are heroes. So that's part of my answer. Uh, another challenge, of course, that we have is that uh, what we think of is always much more expensive than what we wish it would cost. But I think that's part of life, right? Ice cream is more expensive than we want also. So um, we have somehow to chart a course through, uh, through life and make choices that produce discoveries frequently, and uh, not only to choose the big missions, but also to make small ones. Both are very important for progress. More questions? Question. Uh, do you have, uh, what is your speculation? Sorry. What, what's your general speculation as to what the dark matter or the dark energy might be? Do you have any idea? Okay, well, so what could the dark matter or dark energy be? Uh, well, um, the particle th physicists, the people who've been crashing particles into each other in great accelerators and trying to understand the huge multiplicity of fun elementary particles, uh, they have a place in their theory for these kinds of stuff, uh, especially for the dark matter. They have invented things called uh, partner particles or supersymmetry. So there's a whole array of potentially invisible particles that would have gravity but not do anything else. So they've got a story, and uh, right now we haven't got a proof. Uh, but the fact that this dark matter exists is real important to them. Uh, the dark energy uh, is also predicted now by many theories, but um, we have many more theories than we have measurements. And so we can't tell if any of them are correct. Uh, similarly, um, <coughs> we can't tell if there were other universes. Um, many of the calculations say, well, what if there were other universes that happened along with ours? Would we ever know? Well, probably we would never know because uh, they're not somehow closely enough connected. So uh, people are looking, and once in a while we get lucky and we find a way. When the uh, theory of inflation, that's uh, our story now for the earliest moments of the universe that we're in, uh, was first invented, a lot of people were skeptical, including myself. Uh, but now it seems that we have tested it, and it's passed the test. So that wasn't something I expected. But the little speckle patterns of the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe map, that big map with all little speckles, uh, that can be analyzed very carefully to say, yeah, the inflationary theory could be right. And this, that's, that was a surprise to me. And there are more things coming. So we, may, we have much yet to learn. More questions. You may have said it and I missed it. What exactly is the inflational theory? Oh, I didn't really describe the inflation theory. <clears throat> but uh, Alan Guth suggests, uh, and, um, 
and this has now been worked out by many people, that uh, the first sub-microsecond of the universe uh, included a time when the universe doubled in size at least 100 times, very, very rapidly, all in the first microsecond. And we call this the inflationary period because we uh, use the same term for economics of exponential growth. Uh, why did it happen? We don't know. But we have mathematical descriptions that fit what we see. And so well, that's kind of a, a surprise of modern times. So that's part of what happened before the Big Bang? It could be. <clears throat> or it's the first part of the Big Bang. Okay, I think we've come to the end of our tape. So uh, I think we conclude our talk, but I'd be very happy to talk with individuals. And um, also I wanted to thank the technical team. I think there are altogether seven of us, including me today, to make one of these events happen. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you.